All right, in this video, we're gonna show you how to replace the prop and something to look at. In this case, this is a 75 horsepower Mercury four stroke. So you can see the unit there. It's a 2020 or 2021 model. So anyways, um, <clears throat> I hit a sandbar, as you can see, a rock sandbar, and did some massive damage to the boat. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get yourself a new prop, and we'll look at that in a minute. So right now, this fella here is about a 13.8 uh, inch diameter by 11 inch or 11 pitch. And uh, it's the Mercury Spitfire prop that came stock on the motor. So first we're gonna take this unit off. So to take it off, the uh, recommendations from all the manufacturers are to make sure that you have uh, the boat in neutral, a spark plug disconnected and the key out of the ignition. That way if you're spinning the motor, nothing can accidentally kick over. So uh, assuming that you've done that, get yourself a two by four or something similar, and you're gonna wedge that in so that the prop can't spin. And everybody recommends a floating prop wrench. Why? Because this floating prop wrench is good for one and one sixteenths inch, which is what this fella is here. And, uh, and it floats. So if you have to change a prop, cause you're gonna carry a spare one with you in the boat while you're boating, you have something that if you drop in the water, uh, is easily recoverable. Now, before you use the floating prop wrench, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that you have a tool to get in to loosen these locking tabs. So you can see the locking tab right there. So this is bent over typically, and it acts as a cotter pin, right? So the old cotter pin style would go right through the shaft. Uh, this particular unit here is gonna be bent up against the nut. I've already loosened it. So I've bent it out on both sides. And then we're gonna put the wrench on with the two by four in there, and we're gonna loosen the nut off so that we can remove the prop and the hub assembly. Now it doesn't take much to actually remove that nut once everything's loose. So you get your wood in there and spin that wrench. It's locked in place using the wood, so it can't spin any further. So we get that wrench on there and just spin it loose and it will be it should only be like, I think 55 foot pounds or something like that. Read the specs, but it comes off very easily. So once we get that off, we're gonna remove that locking piece there. And now the prop and everything will come off. You can see that spline piece will come out. I'll just remove this board and we'll pull the prop off here. Now I'm not a boating expert. This is my first boat. It's a, a Prince Craft Vectra 19. It's a little twin tube pontoon, but I've been learning as I go. Now, this is a Mercury Spitfire prop, came OEM on the boat, but you can obviously get aftermarket props. So the thing that you need to do is make sure that you got the right hub adapter inside. Uh, everybody talks about the flow torque assemblies. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the right one. Your dealer will be able to make sure that they're able to assist you with getting the proper adapter and setup, but this assembly here will most likely be reusable. And you can see that's what fits into that hub assembly there. You can see the splines that go on the shaft there. So that unit there, I'm going to reuse. Now, we actually assumed that with a new prop, I would be able to possibly press out that hub, that plastic hub adapter inside there. And uh, we did some good damage to this prop. And as I looked at the hub, you can see the marine grease in there. I started to look down the splines and what you can actually see is that we actually did enough damage that we've cracked the plastic hub. And you can see that crack right there. So if you look inside there, you can see right there, that crack actually starts, works its way down along inside and actually comes back. And I'll see if I can clear it up here. But you can actually see that crack continues on on a bit of an angle here. Now, I'm not known for any kind of videography skill set here. So we'll see if we can clean it up here. So the crack in this hub actually comes down right there, back and along this way. If I tried to reuse this hub, like we had anticipated might be possible, it wouldn't work. In fact, when I press it out, it'll probably break in half. Luckily, I bought a new prop and I picked up a new hub assembly. I knew that the actual prop itself took most of the damage. You can see the aluminum got a good 
beading here on this rock bar. The uh, machine spline piece looks pretty good. Nothing wrong with it. But that plastic hub inside, that definitely is damaged. So I'm not going to be able to reuse that on a spare. Now let's take a look at the two different props here. So you can see the OEM Spitfire prop here. And that's a 13.8 by 11 pitch. And this unit here, this is a replacement. This is a Hustler prop. Everybody, I guess, is familiar with these fellows, a Turning Point Hustler. This is a 14, so roughly a 13.8. But this one here has a 13 pitch. So the idea is that for every rev revolution, I'm going to be able to travel 13 inches, whereas with this one, every revolution, I'm going to travel 11 inches. Now, this one's going to give me a better hole shot, right? How quick that, uh, that bolt pulls as I take off, and that's going to give me more instant torque. This one should theoretically give me more speed once I'm up and moving. I'm towing little kids, so I'm hoping for a little bit more speed, recognizing I'm not going to have the oomph that the... 13.8 uh, by 11 gives me as I kick things off. So I'm going to try this, this 14 by 13 uh, versus this, you know, approximately 14 by 11. I do have another 14 by 11 as well. I picked up two props, but I'm going to test this one out and see how it works. Now note the, uh, the adapter on here as well. You can see this plastic adapter around the top. That makes sure that this prop, which can be used on this Mercury engine that I have, uh, is going to be the same dimensions as the Spitfire prop, the OEM. You can see they're the same width. If I didn't have that adapter on there, it would actually be narrower, and that would potentially allow some of the exhaust from the engine to wash out, creating a whole bunch of bubbles, and those bubbles would mean that my blades themselves were not able to grip onto the water. They weren't able to catch and, and cup and shoot that water out. So that adapter is there to take up that space that's taken up on the OEM Spitfire prop. Why did I go with this guy? This guy here was available. And as I understand it, it's a fraction of the cost of the Mercury OEM stuff. I paid roughly $160 Canadian for this. And as I understand it, this kit would probably run me something like 300 bucks, but it does come with that hub adapter and assembly as well. So that's a complete kit, but it's a more expensive kit. And I don't know that I'm gonna see any significant benefit from the OEM versus this aftermarket unit. So we're gonna put this aftermarket unit on and test it out. One of the things I wanna mention is that with this, uh, this plastic hub assembly, this adapter that goes inside, it goes in from the back here and, uh, and it just presses down inside. So we used a rubber mallet to smack it down. You do wanna make sure it's down all the way and that it's seated flush down at the bottom. And uh, there is a backing plate, uh, like a brass backing plate on the engine that you can use after you've got this pushed in. And you can just sit it on top here and give it a tap and make sure everything is in there. That's what we did at the shop that uh, I worked with today. So that's all pushed in and uh, pressed down as far as it will go. Okay, so we've got our aftermarket unit ready to go here. I'm just going to put this adapter in. Just lines up and presses in. There we go. So you can see that's ready to go. And we're going to install that onto the boat. I'm going to give this guy a little bit of a clean up and apply some new marine grease. But in all honesty, it's probably fine the way it is. There's no goop or gunk. It's just grease on there right now. But uh, I've got some new stuff to put on, so we'll do that. Okay, so we're going to slide this on. It's now on and in place. And what are we going to remember to do? We're going to remember to put our locking adapter on first. That locking adapter is super important. That locking adapter is important because while we're in drive, while nothing will happen, because the, uh, the prop is constantly pushing itself into the motor, as soon as we put it in reverse, if we don't have this locking adapter to hold that nut in place, this thing can spin itself off. And in fact, what I've heard is that if you don't have this locking adapter on, you put this in reverse at the boat launch when you're launching your boat and you'll lose your prop in the first minute because as you put it in reverse, it's just unscrewing itself. So make sure that a locking adapter goes on and then get your nut on there. And we're gonna make sure that we follow the same steps that we did previously. We're gonna put that two by four back in place 
we're going to get it all jammed up nice and snug again engine in neutral and um, they suggest removing the spark plugs and making sure that the key is out so we're going to snug that up here and then we're going to put those locking tabs up you can see i got my two by four wedged in there and i'm going to start snugging this up you'll note i am not using an impact i'm not taking a shortcut i'm just taking my time and it doesn't go on super tight make sure you read the specs i believe this one was 55 foot pounds but if you're doing this in the lake and that fell down um, you don't have a torque wrench with you so make it snug don't over tighten it uh, and certainly don't under tighten it what's the easiest way to get the locking tabs back in place well i'm going to use a pair of channel locks i'm going to squeeze those locking tabs up nice and snug you can see now that our nut cannot come undone. Earlier we looked at that collar that helps with the gap between the prop and the motor. And you can see that here. You can see without that collar, I would have a gap on this prop between there and there. So that would allow some of the exhaust gases out, which would, uh, which would get bubbles all around here. And just like uh, high divers, when they're practicing jumping into a pool, right, they flood the pool with bubbles so that there's no water, essentially. They just really decrease that density by making it this homogenous gas slash liquid mix. That's the same thing that would happen here. So we'd have bubbles coming out and the prop wouldn't have any water to grab onto. So that's why we need to make sure that that collar is in place there. Now, what other damage did I do to this thing when I hit that rock uh, wall underwater? It's not too bad. It's, it's, it's mostly cosmetic here, a little chunk out there, uh, and you can see a little divot out there. So what I'm going to do in this case here, uh, there are uh, skag uh, guards you can put on the bottom and in some case even replace this piece here. When I saw those rocks, I immediately threw everything into neutral and started hitting the trim up button as quick as I could. I wanted it in neutral so that uh, the motor was no longer spinning under its own power and hopefully it would just drag in the water and, and lessen the damage to the assembly. Um, and then I was obviously trimming up to try to get everything away from the rocks. But I'm just going to JB weld this and uh, then I'm going to mask this off, JB weld it, sand it up nice, and I'm, uh, I'm going to paint it. So um, not too concerned. I think this is mostly cosmetic. This is after all a pontoon boat, not a, uh, a speed boat or a wakeboard or something like that. So. So that's it. And so we're going to work on our little Mercury 75 four stroke here. We're going to see how this works. Um, I anticipate that going to this 14 by 13 pitch is going to reduce my RPMs a little bit. So when I'm maxed out right now, I'm running at about 5,500 RPMs using the old prop. That's the you know, approximately 14 by 11. So when this guy here is on, I think it's going to be probably in the neighborhood of 5,000 to 5,200. And uh, from what I understand and all the research I've done, that 5,000 mark is kind of a good number. We don't want to go too far below that because the engine's lugging, the engine's working too hard, it's not getting the coolant flow. Um, if, if I run this thing full out and get max speed, we're probably going to be sitting there at around that 50, let's call it 5,200 RPM mark. So it's a little bit less but it's still enough that the engine's kind of in that optimal range when it's maxed out. Uh, if we're sitting at something like 6,000 plus, uh, that prop is not right. The engine is then spinning too fast, so we don't want to see that. And if we get into the 4,000s and lower, and uh, that's where it's maxing out, uh, they're referring to that as lugging. And uh, I think of that the same way that I think of an old four-stroke dirt bike, uh, where it's just chugging away, uh, you're uh, you're in whatever gear you're in let's say you're in second gear on a two stroke and you're in fourth gear on a four stroke and it's just chugging away and lugging away uh, the engine is not super happy over a long period of time so you don't want to have maxing out at a, uh, a too low of an rpm because you're lugging so that's how i understand it but again i'm a rookie at this this is the stuff i've learned in the past couple of days Hopefully someone finds some value in this. There's probably lots of videos like this online, but I was bored and thought I would document it. So have a good one and happy and safe boating, everybody. Okay, we talked about getting that hub assembly out. I've grabbed a socket from an impact set here, Princess Auto here in Canada, and that looks like a good fit, nice size. 
Just gonna give that a tap with the rubber mallet here. And I believe our hub assembly is loose. Okay, so it's good that we actually picked up that extra hub assembly. We were talking about reusing the one that we had, but uh, the hub sleeve, I guess, is, is what it actually is. You can see here that I do have a crack in the bottom left corner. You can see that right there, um, right in that area there. And that crack continues down along the unit and splits over here. Now, I guess once it's inside the prop, I mean, it may be contained and maybe this is okay to continue using, but I don't know about you. I don't want to be out on a big lake and stranded somewhere and unable to use it. So I'm going to use the other one, the brand new one in the new prop. And uh, I've got a spare prop I'm going to keep in the boat now. I'm going to pick up a new sleeve assembly and I'm going to throw that in there as well so it's ready to go so I don't have to punch it in on the lake should I run into trouble again. I think this piece was about 30 bucks or something Canadian. So anyways, good that we bought an extra. We debated that. Um, thought the prop took all the damage, but obviously that was a big enough impact that this took some damage too. So note to self, have some spares and don't hit rocks. So what are the parts that I'm using? This is the... Um, Turning Point Propellers Hustler Aluminum Prop. The one that I'm installing right now is the 14 diameter by 13 pitch. Right hand four blade. I went with a four blade because that's supposed to just help with the control, control and maneuverability of a pontoon. Uh, the four blade is just supposed to be superior in terms of helping to move that barge around the water. And then here's my other one. This is sort of similar to what the OEM was. It was a 13.8 by 11, so 14.11, you can see right there. Uh, also the four blade version, also a Hustler turning point at a uh, reduced cost versus the Mercury OEM Spitfire stuff. So these are um, supposed to be good pontoon propellers. Everything that I've read says that you're kind of looking between, you know, 11 to 13 for pitch on pontoons and for this particular engine, it's, uh, it's around that 14 inch diameter. And then this is the sleeve, so Quicksilver. If you think about this, uh, interestingly, mercury used to be known in the old days as Quicksilver. So Quicksilver parts are apparently manufactured by mercury, but uh, resaleable by more organizations. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't have a clue, but I've got the Quicksilver Flow Torque 2 drive sleeve. So this is that plastic sleeve uh, that I put into the new prop. I'm going to have to get a new one of these as well to put it into this prop here. And that 14 by 11 uh, is going to sit in the boat as a spare. It's 150 bucks sitting in the boat as a spare, but it's much better to have something like that handy. Or if you can rebuild your old one, do that. And that way, if you're 20 miles down a long lake, you're not stranded trying to get home uh, without a viable and usable prop. So hopefully all of this rambling uh, helps somebody new like myself uh, feel free to leave your comments and suggestions in the comments below. Again, safe and happy boating. Take care.